Welcome guys, welcome back to Minkers Corner once again. This is the third video I tried to make today, but anyways, uh, there was a lot of technical issues. I hope this, you know, this works because something's been funky. I don't know what's happening. Uh, today what we're going to be doing, we're watching uh, Germany could not win World War II. It's a very famous video. I've already watched it, so <laughs> disclaimer, I don't remember that well, but I remember it was very funny and very informative. So there's that. Uh, yeah, let's go in. You've been warned, though. There, I finished fine tuning my what if machine. Never watch Futurama. What if question accurate to within one tenth of a plausibility unit. Who wants the machine to show them an alternate reality? Oh, oh, I want to know if Germany wins if Hitler stops making decisions. <laughs> a question for the what if machine uh, i have one do they win if they mars produce the mouse tank i love this this is, this is very well take that machine show me what would happen if they took moscow oh this is very well done People well, love rooting for the underdog. These stories strike a chord with us at a very basic level, and you can tell this by how popular these stories are in media. This also translates to real world True. stories, although real life does not have a plot that always turns in the underdog's favor. So there's this kind of romanticism connected to fighting for a lost cause that a lot of people assign to a lot of real world groups. One of these you see talked about a lot is the German army in World War II. That if only dumb Hitler hadn't been in charge, or if different choices were made, that the war would have turned out different. And a lot of these arguments. I mean, when you think about it, Germany wasn't really the underdog. Like, what would have been like a real underdog story is somehow Poland was able to stop both Germany and Russia. You know, that would have been really interesting. It seemed to hold water on the surface, but upon reflection, I mean, he... mostly miss the point or do not make a significant enough change to sway anything. These are my favorite how Germany could have won scenarios and how they're wrong. Okay. Nothing would have changed. I hear this one all the time, that if the Germans had just driven onto Moscow and taken it, the Russians would have capitulated. But it is rarely backed up with evidence as to yeah, why. Not happening. Even in the memoirs of German generals after friend. the war, they constantly mention that the drive to Moscow would have meant victory in the East. And I think the reason for this is that they model the Russian campaign after the French campaign. In the French campaign in 1940, the French surrender once Paris is cut off from its forces and looks like it's about to fall. Using this model, a lot of people think that the exact same would apply to Russia. The only problem with this is Russia is a whole different animal, both politically and geographically. Stalin was going to put every man, woman, and child in the Soviet Union between him and the advance. Yeah, he wasn't Germany. surrendering because this Moscow is fell. by the way the Red Army fought the war, often trading casualties for time. So if Moscow was taken, sure, it's a political and also logistical defeat, given that the rail network was centered around it. But no way do I think Stalin is just going to shrug and say, well, we tried, after Moscow was taken. Oh, it's funny, that, though. Probably see the Soviet Imagine that he receives a call, Moscow has fallen, he's like... It's over, guys. You know, it's, it's not to capitulate, like... Fighting to the bitter end, just right. like the Germans did in reality. Relax. This is also backed up by real-world history from Napoleon's Russia campaign in yeah. 1812, where he went on to take Moscow but still lost the war. We know about Russia the Russian uh, <laughs> campaign of Napoleon the the on this channel and at a quite well. Than any other country can. And therefore, the normal rules of war, such as taking the capital and ensuring victory, do not apply. Are they not seeing this? Another commonly heard point is that Hitler made terrible decisions and he should have just listened to his generals. Now I'm not here to defend Adolf Hitler, he's a crazy genocidal maniac, let's not make two ways about it. But this is a noise- You know what would be funny? If this video took a crazy turn and he starts defending, <laughs> he starts defending Hitler for no reason. Like you know the video like six minutes in is very normal, the video informative, and then he's like you know, if only you listen. <laughs> That's be funny. For example, Hitler and the High Command were all in agreement on invading Russia. They all very much wanted to, in their eyes, destroy communism and save Germany, as Hitler laid out in his book. But once this effort was undertaken, Hitler and his generals began to disagree at times on what moves needed to be made. And once the war is over, many generals in their memoirs begin to claim that Hitler made all the bad decisions, and that if he had just listened to them, the war would have been won. And one example of this yeah. I already hinted at in the former point. Hitler's generals were convinced that taking Moscow would end the war for many erroneous reasons I listed previously. 
For Hitler, Moscow was a general direction in which to head, but was not the final objective. For him, the resources in the Ukraine and the oil fields beyond were a much more important target. And given I mean, Germany's oil shortages, strategically, it makes much more sense in his to think the resources than And actually, a lot of Hitler's so called mistakes start to make a whole lot more sense once you put it into the context of Germany's fuel shortages. And if you want more information on this, tick I'm gonna watch the video, video on Germany's this oil video? problem that you should really check out. Another example of this sentiment being wrong is Operation Citadel in 1943. Hitler's generals convinced him that an attack on the Kursk bulge would cripple the Red Army and renew Germany's initiative in the war. Hitler saw this plan as very flawed, though, famously saying, every time I think about Operation Citadel, my stomach turns over. And seeing how poorly this turned out for the Germans, his premonition was eerily correct. Now, if this was the caricature of Hitler always overriding his generals that is commonly seen, Citadel would have been called off before it was launched. Now, these are just two quick examples, and yes, there are times, especially later in the war, where Hitler overrules his generals with poor decisions. The Battle of the Bulge comes to mind. But early in the war, when these decisions really count, Hitler is many times making the right decisions when overruling his generals or going along with them in agreement of a common goal. So Hitler should have just listened to his generals and he would have won the war is a moot point. Because many times he did and his generals were wrong, and many times he didn't and he turned out to be right. It's all Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler. Yeah, uh, you this could. This is actually a point I used to subscribe to. A very honest critique of the German war economy is that it was not on the right footing. And people make this argument usually saying things like, Germany should have just made more Panzer IVs instead of pouring resources into the Tiger. Or, Germany should have built the Luftwaffe back up so they could regain air superiority. Resources? And I will give you that the German war economy in many places was an absolute nightmare. John Parshall does an excellent lecture on tank production in World War II and really highlights how backwards the German production process yeah. was for armored vehicle manufacturing, and mentions how that knowledge can be applied to other types of war manufacturing. And although once Spear takes over, production is streamlined to a degree, and munitions and weapons production goes up year by year, it's not near where it needs to be to fight this attritional war. So obviously the solution is to just streamline production, sort of how you see in the American model, and this would have given Germany a better chance in the war. Although this is a good criticism, it misses the core issue. The biggest thing Germany was running low on from 1942 onward is, as I mentioned before, oil. Mm -hmm. And larger numbers of tanks and planes wouldn't be any good if there was no fuel to run them. Good also, point. Germany was having manpower shortages as early as 1942 or 43, and along with fuel to run these machines, you need people to crew them. These are just two issues that cannot be remedied by streamlining production. At a certain point, Germany is just going to be out of oil and out Cook of up those tanks and coming no out of the factory. Tanks or planes okay. would operationally be possible. What's the matter? Run out of gas? Kind of embarrassing. Just go in with Japan. Yeah. This is another point that deceptively seems to make a lot of sense. It does. Though. Germany was crushed by a two-front war. It stands to reason that if Japan and Germany through their alliance had coordinated an attack on Russia, they would have won. And that may honestly be true. A big boost to the defense of Moscow came after Russian troops from Siberia were sent west after the Russo-Japanese non-aggression yeah. pact. The only yeah. problem with this is that coordination did not and was never going to happen. Germany and Japan were allies by circumstance and shared no real common goals with each other. And in fact, they're operating in opposition to each other at times. German training of Chinese troops in the 30s as they were fighting the Japanese is a direct example of this. In short, neither side was going to stick out its neck for the other. In fact, Russia as a common enemy was probably the only instance in which they would have, and even then they did not. The reason for Japan not wanting to do this is mostly colored by the Japanese experience against the Soviets at the Battle of Konkangol, please forgive my pronunciation, where the Red Army Never heard of the it. Imperial Army a very bloody nose in an undeclared border conflict. Hmm. This incident convinced the Japanese oh, yeah, I remember to not in go Horse through Horse any action with the Soviet Union as they did not want war with them since they there were already fighting China and would soon be fighting the United States. This avoidance of provoking the Soviet Union went far enough that during the war in the Pacific between Japan and the United States, the Japanese refused to sink any U.S. merchant ships headed to the Soviet Union. So, the Japanese attacking the Soviet Union directly flies in the face of the intentions and characteristics of the Japanese High Command, to the point where it strays out of potential history Kill yourself. into the realm of fantasy. You screwed me again, Japan. What's Wonder Rock? This is my favorite one. If they had just made, insert ridiculous design here, Jeez. the war may have gone differently. And it's the idea that this thing, or this thing, or this thing, That's would somehow cool have single-handedly lengthened the war. 
You know? There are a few fan favorites for picks of these. The one I see most often being the mouse. The mouse? The ridiculous oh, I remember this. behemoth that in reality would have been awesome target practice for allied fighter bombers and something for allied soldiers to gawk at once it had run out of fuel point. and had to be abandoned. It's a crazy thing. Or German jet aircraft that although cutting edge and superior to what the allies had, still couldn't have been applied in a large scale due to the aforementioned fuel and personnel problems. Yeah, fucking fuel. The list Killed for everything. these things goes on and on. A personal pet peeve of mine in this category is the what-if question about the German atomic program and the claim that if they had applied themselves, no. the Germans could have come up with an atomic weapon first. This notion, though, just like that of Japan invading Russia, very quickly falls into the category of fantasy, once looked at for three main reasons. That's Germany. One, many of Germany's top scientists were expelled in the 30s for being Jewish, automatically limiting German atomic That's capabilities. More. And actually, many of these scientists went on to work in the American nuclear program. So to make this win scenario work, you automatically have to make the Nazis tolerant of Jews, which is not going to happen. Two, the German atomic program is all but cancelled by 1942. Mm. As Speer put it, we got the view that the development was very much at the beginning. The physicists themselves didn't want to put much into it. Which works into my third point, that Hitler saw atomic science as Jewish science, and pointed the focus of German development towards conventional weapons. So we're not even talking about an atomic race between the U.S. and Germany, as it was barely being pursued by the Germans. And to give a what-if scenario about it would fly directly in the face of what Hitler stood for. And this gets into the bigger problem with this question, that even if Germany does produce these wonder weapons and extends the war, it's only going to extend it long enough to be the first country to get nuked due to the Germany first nuke? policy of the Allies. Are you making a jet plane? Hmm? Or a remote control that can turn you into super soldier? Hmm? Hmm? Or is it just another dumb tank? The now these are just a handful of points that people bring up when talking about how Germany could have won. Oh, there's a part but There are two, many so. more that I didn't go into that are equally baseless, such as the Germans should have and could have invaded England, even though the Kriegsmarine would not be able to support. Yeah, a Operation Sea Lion wasn't happening. A much larger Royal Navy would have probably sunk the invading force before it even reached the shores. Yeah. Or the Barbarossa should have taken place earlier, even though it wasn't really the winter or the rainy season that stopped the Germans. It was a lack of supplies that needed to be brought up. For more info on that, check out this lecture by David Stahill. You'll see people bringing up scenario after scenario that bends reality and character motivations very widely to craft a scenario that Germany could win. But here's my point. Germany would not have won World War II no matter what way you slice it. The fact of the matter is, this is a country that is too small and too short on resources to take on the three largest world powers at once, especially given the erroneous actions and motivations they have. Basically, the Germans dealt themselves a bad hand and played it poorly. And the only way that's going to change is if you bend time and space to their liking with the benefit of 2020 hindsight. All things that are not going to happen in reality. Yeah, it's a very good video. Uh, so, my thoughts on this. I agree with pretty much everything. Uh, yeah. Very informative. I'm sorry, I don't have that many thoughts. I was just... I'm still on my fucking two videos, man. I, was, I made two videos. They were pretty long. And somehow, my computer was like, you know what? You know, your efforts were like, fuck you, bitch. I'm still on that. I'm sorry my reaction was so far here. Uh, I just want to make a second video. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, it's a very interesting concept. Uh, yeah, Germany was fucked. Especially by 1942. It was over. Uh, a lot of people died, though. Uh, anyways, if you like my reaction, like, subscribe, and all that, I'll see you guys next time.